Shalom. I'm gonna give a praise on the glory to Yahweh, Hashem, 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 Raka Kadash, and the Lord answered the elders and apostles of great millstone to tell truth and peace, blessing, and salutations to the whole for let. And yeah, man, literally, I was just scrolling on YouTube while well, on the shorts, and um, this short from um, Judah 12, 144, and it was um, like a, a snippet of um, the Apostle Taha's video, basically saying, be occupied in prophecy, because we're almost out of this bitch. And um, I thought that's what I'd talk about. <laughs> Esau, Edom, being taken out of power, because that's a part of prophecy. The Lord bringing down Esau, Edom. <clears throat> oh yeah, and another thing, um, yeah, I just wanted to quickly make mention of this dream that I had today. And basically, the dream was, um, I was with the apostles and we were on the streets teaching together and it, I know it sounds it sounds crazy like I, I met none of the apostles but they were all there and there was brothers that I haven't seen before that were there and everyone had um well the majority was wearing um these navy blue garments with um with a white border on it and the apostles had different garments on. I can't remember the colours, but yeah, we were on the highways and byways together, man. Basically prophesying. And literally, man, <laughs> it, it was an amazing dream. It was an amazing dream to, to be out there with the apostles and the other brothers, man. It was, it was absolutely amazing. And who knows? We know that spiritual power's coming. And if I can fly, what should I say, when I do fly, I'm, I'm heading over to um to Babylon, man. I'm gonna visit the all the brothers, man. I'm gonna visit all the brothers. And we're gonna prophesy together, cause we know that the time of prophesying is coming to an end, man. The famine of the word. And literally, um, I literally came across an article, a news article talking about how there's going to be an internet apocalypse, and we know. Esau at some point is going to shut down the internet and soon we won't be able to upload videos to um, to YouTube or any of the websites that basically allow videos to be uploaded there. We know the family of words coming too, man. <laughs> but yeah, man, let me, um, let me go on ahead and talk about Esau Edom and his downfall. And you see with this um, NWO that he has, this agenda that that Esau Edom's had, he's had it for for many generations, man. This has been something on his mind since the garden. I want to say the garden. I mean, when he was um had that envy, that hatred toward Adam. That <laughs> and literally the beginning stages of his NWO basically started when he went up to Eve and basically used his deceptive speech to deceive her and make her wonder. <clears throat> but yeah, now we're living in those times where Esau's getting ready to finally fulfill that end of your own, man. But then again, we know he's not gonna complete it. Cause like the scriptures may mention. <sighs> Suck you. Perform. Enterprise. Job 5 and 12, it says he disappointed the devices of the crafty and the crafty going into Esau Edom, man. <clears throat> and it says so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Yeah, that NWO. They're not really going to get a chance to even finish it. They're going to be setting it up. <laughs> and while they're setting it up, the Lord going to execute those judgments. He's going to send those plagues, man. The Lord have power of the plagues. I like him as mentioned, man. Job 20 and 23, it says, When he is about to fill his belly, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him, and he shall rain upon him while he is eating. So, yeah, while he's in the midst of setting it up, man, the Lord going to have those icy beams come from afar, from a faraway country, man, or faraway countries, and they're going to come over to Babylon. Huh. 
it's lucky. It's <laughs> lucky. Um, I should just turn to look at the window and there's a cat in the garden. A white cat. Or should I say a black and white cat in the garden? Just chilling. <laughs> but, um, yeah, carrying on. Yeah, the logo send those intercontinental ballistic missiles, man. And those missiles are going to come from the heavens. Like, literally, the whole purpose of those missiles is to destroy, man. As he makes mention in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 54 and 16, and it says, Behold, I've created the smith that blows the coals on the fire. We know that smith is someone that makes weapons. I bought... <clears throat> because it's prophecy, we've got to talk about it in this age. So the modern day Smiths of today would be the scientists. And now the cat's just staring at me <laughs> through the window. <laughs> so lucky, so lucky. <clears throat> just watching me, man. Go about your business, cat. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I was saying. The what is wrong with this cat, man? It, it, it just keeps looking back at me. <laughs> oh, man, this cat's funny, man. Now he's walked all the way to the back of the garden to look at me. But, um, <laughs> let's carry on. Yeah, the modern day Smith being, um, the German scientist. And the German scientists were the first ones to come up with, um, those at atomic bombs and literally some of them went to America and some of them went to Russia and that's why America and Russia have the best nuclear capability out of all the other countries man and literally the purpose of the Lord doing that is so that the Lord can have them fight each other man and destroy each other because they're going to send off those nuclear missiles during World War Three. Because like it says, it says, and that bring it forth an instrument for his work. And I've created the waste that to destroy. And that's exactly what those nuclear missiles are going to do. It's going to leave America desolate. It's going to empty the land, man. There's going to be nothing left. Like it's mentioned in Jeremiah 51 and 2. It says, and I was sent unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. And yeah, man, being those that have nuclear capability. <laughs> like I made mention here, Jeremiah 15 and 13, and it says, Because of the wrath of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Haushai shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goes by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. Put yourselves in a ray against Babylon, all oh, ye that bend the bow. So all those that have nuclear capability, shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she have sinned against the Lord Yahweh by Shema Hoshai. So yeah, man, use all them intercontinental ballistic missiles. Put all the warheads in it, fill it up to the brim. Don't, don't leave nothing behind, man. Use all of it. And it says, shout against her round about. She have given her hand, her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down, for it's the vengeance of the Lord Yahweh by Shem Shai. Take vengeance upon her, as she have done, do unto her. And yeah, man, the Lord's going to call together the archers, man. <laughs> and they're going to bend the bow, and they're going to shoot. And they're going to shoot those intercontinental ballistic missiles. Where is it? Yeah, Jeremiah 50 and 20, you know what? It was shut up. Jeremiah 15 25 It says the Lord Yahweh but Shema Hoshai have opened his armory and the armory is where the weapons are kept and have brought forth the weapons of his indignation and indignation meaning righteous anger for this is the work of the Lord Yahweh of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans and yeah man the Lord's going to leave it just like Sodom and Gomorrah but even worse or should I say even worse hey, look at that Look at the time, 9.44. We'll praise the Yahweh Shema HaShai, man. Call the Yahweh Shema HaShai. And let me head on over to Isaiah 13 and show you what the work is. This is the work of the Lord Yahweh of hosts. And it says, And Babylon, 
the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Sheldies, excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And we know he did that with fire and brimstone. And brimstone meaning sulfur. And sulfur is highly flammable. And this is in Babylon. It's lucky I just read that. Verse 20 says, It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabia pitch tent there. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. So again, no one, but no one won't be dwelling in in America no more. Because everything's going to be gone. It's going to be left as a desert, man. As it may mention, this is neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. So yeah, people won't be having kids there like 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 what's going on now, man. <clears throat> it's going to be left desolate, man. Or should I say, it's going to be inhabited by desert creatures, as it makes mention in verse 21 here. It says, the, the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses suck here. Actually, yeah, let me carry on. I thought, uh, I, thought I forgot verse 20, but I realised I just I read it. But carrying on, um... <sighs> Mm, it says, but the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and the houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dwell dance there, and the wild beasts of the island shall cry in the desolate houses, and dragons in the pleasant palaces, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. And that's exactly what the work of the Lord Yahweh of host is in the land of America to leave it desolate. To have those weapons of indignation to come from a far country and lick it down. Like it's mentioned here, Isaiah 13 and 5. They come from a far country from the end of heaven. Even the Lord Yahweh Bashima will shine the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. And that's what these missiles are going to do. <laughs> and it's going to rain upon Esau Edom and upon his enterprise. <laughs> Esau really, Esau really believes he's going to return and build the desolate places. Because that's what um, Esau is used to doing. The Lord would destroy his, his um, dwelling places. And then Esau would come back and then build it back up again. And that's what Esau thinks he's going to do this time. He thinks he's going to destroy America and then build it back up. But that's not going to happen. Uh, Isaiah 24 and 20 It says the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard And this is going into when those missiles go off man Like literally John they told you how, how big the, the number was 200,000, 200 million And literally <laughs> One warhead can carry It's lucky not one warhead One ICBM can carry multiple warheads And the Satan 2, which is from Russia, literally that can carry 14 large nuclear warheads. And that's just one ICBM. <clears throat> so imagine the nation gathering. <sighs> the nation's gathering. It's lucky. The Lord gathering all these nations to shoot their missiles. And like you may mention in the book of Jeremiah, it said spare no arrows. Use all of them. So just imagine the number, man. And it says, And shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. So <laughs> Esau thinks he's going to do some phoenix thing, which with the phoenix, it's, um, it basically means to rise out the ashes, to rise out the destruction, to be basically rebirth or reborn. That's what that's how Esau Eden thinks is gonna happen. But like you made mention, it shall fall and not rise again. Like uh, this is this is the the last of Esau's rulership, man. Second address six and nine. It says for Esau is the end of the world, being an end of an age. So this is the end of Esau's rulership, man. So once Esau does whatever he needs to do, 
to fulfill prophecy. <laughs> he won't be coming back up again. Like this is his last time, man. This is the last time of the rulership of any heathen. After after Esau goes down, literally like it's it's gonna be our time to rule forever and ever, even ever and ever. And it says, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So yeah, man. That's why the Lord Yahweh is coming back to claim what's his and to give rulership or the kingdom to Israel. Or should I say the 12 tribes of Israel? And just like the saints back then, man, they've been waiting for this. <clears throat> Let's get it. Yeah, Acts 1 and 6, it says, When therefore we came together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And you see, at that point in time, it, it wasn't time. But it's getting to ready to be that time. And when the Lord Yahweh makes his return, he's going to restore the kingdom to the 12 tribes of Israel, man. And we're going to have dominion over this earth and over those other planets and over, and over all the solar systems. And universes, man, and all galaxies. We will have dominion over all of it, man. In the name of Yahweh, Hashem, Hashem is going to be declared throughout all of it. <clears throat> and yeah, man, I can't forget about Revelation six and four, because these nuclear weapons. That's they're they're the ones. I should say they're the very things that's going to do the job. <laughs> and when I say do the job, I mean. To leave America desolate. Revelation 6 and 4 says, And there went out another horse. <sighs> and the reason why I made mention of a horse is because the horse symbolizes power. And that power was given to the one that was red, <laughs> which the red one is Esau Edom. As it makes mention when it's describing the appearance of Esau Edom when he came out the womb, he was red all over like a hairy garment. And the reason why was because he didn't have any melanin. So therefore, the blood was shown forth through his skin. And that's why they made mention of him being red. Because that blood was shown forth through his skin, man. And like he made mention, power was given to the red one. Or should I say, Esau Edom. Like he made mention, he says, and power was given to him that sat around to take peace from the earth. And yeah, that's Esau Edom, man. Esau has been given power over the earth. Esau sitting on that throne, ruling over the earth, man. Like it makes mention in Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And if you really think about it, the power has been given into the hand of Esau Edom. <clears throat> and it says, and that they shall kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And we know uh, when Isaac blessed Esau, it says, Thou shalt live by the sword. So their main weaponry or their main thing they're going to do is kill. And they're going to do that with the blessing they were given. Like, like I mean, mentioned the great sword, those intercontinental ballistic missiles. With those missiles, they're able to kill millions. They're able to kill millions with, with, the, with the <laughs> one great sword. So imagine the 200,000 thousand. <clears throat> and you see these weapons were given into Esau, Edom's hands, man. And they're going to do the work of the Lord. <clears throat> and you see these nations don't realize that they're actually doing the work of the Lord. They're doing according to his word. And they think they're going <laughs> to do all these things in the earth and, and then after rule. After America's taken down now, man, you go into captivity. You go into captivity, man. <laughs> uh, where was I gonna go again? <clears throat> Actually, let me head on over to um, Isaiah 34 and 5. It says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. You be being an intercontinental ballistic missile, or should I say the ICBMs? Because there's going to be more than one. 
And yeah, with these ICBMs, they get fired off and they go all the way up into the heavens, man. And when they go into the heavens, they basically use that that um that height to add velocity to the ICBM to make it go even faster. And it will come crashing down from the heavens, man. And it's gonna be coming down at great speeds. That's why they're so um hard to intercept, man, because they're traveling so fast. And on top of that, it's using um the the gravity the way of the gravity to increase its speed and on top of that you got a fire burning from behind it making it go even faster these missiles can't be intercepted man but yes carry on and it says it shall come down upon idumia and upon the people of my curse of judgment and yeah man that's what it talks about in um revelation 9 man the third part of men being slain with a fire smoke and brimstone which issued out of the mouths of the nuclear warheads. They're going to be destroyed, man. And it says, <clears throat> The soil of the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Hamashah is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats. With the fat of kidneys of rams for the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Hamashah, have a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. <laughs> and you know, let me head on over to Isaiah 63. <coughs> Isaiah 63 on 1, it says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that, this that is glorious in his apparel. And that's going into the Lord, man, Yahushua. And it says, Traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. And like the scriptures may mention, man, he shall be called Yahweh Shai because he shall save his people. He's the deliverer, man. You know, let me get that. Yeah, Matthew 1 and 21, it says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. And like it makes mention as well. <clears throat> Romans 11 26 says, And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and he shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So you see what I mean? The deliverer being Yahweh Shaiman. He is deliverer. And that's that's literally what the Lord gonna do, man. And he said, and we've carried on verse 2, he says, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments are like him that treadeth in a vine fat? And yeah, if you didn't know, wine is basically made by stamping on grapes. You would basically have this um this big bowl, and you'll throw the grapes into it, and you'll basically tread them down and stamp on them, basically releasing the, the juice of the grapes. And literally, when you're done, <laughs> Literally, um, your garments or your clothes will be stained and you'll look red, like you're being covered in blood. <clears throat> and this is talking figuratively. The Lord's garments is not going to be sprinkled in blood. It's just symbolic for the amount of death or bloodshed that is going to take place when the Lord's executing judgment. It says, I have trodden the winepress alone and of the people that was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my remnant. For the death vengeance in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And yeah, man, <clears throat> that time's coming where the Lord is going to redeem his elect of the elect. And like um Yahweh may mention, he is thy he is thy redeemer the Holy One of Israel and is going to send his son to do the deliver delivering man and redeem like it's mentioned as well in the second address son declared ascending second address 13 and 31 it says and one shall undertake to fight against another 
one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, one realm against another. And literally, that's basically going into um, civil war. Um, literally, nation against nation, meaning someone from the nation of Elam fighting against someone from the nation of Edom, someone from the nation of um, Moab fighting against someone from the nation of Ammon, and so on. And then it also goes into, um, like it makes mention, um, about the realms. And the realm meaning a kingdom. So one kingdom versus another. So there's going to be many wars, man, going on. Like different types of wars, man, going on. And that, that final war, which um, is known as the war in heaven, when the Lord makes his return, is going to be fighting against these nations, man. And it's going to be the kingdom of Esau versus the kingdom of Jacob. And carrying on it says, And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the sign shall happen which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And that's you know the part of his canon. Because this is mentioned in, in the Old Testament. Um, Acts 1 and 9, man. Where the Lord will receive into the, in, in the, into the cloud, man. Or a chariot. And it says, I went all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. And a new multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. So there you go, man. These nations that have been gathered are going to try and turn against Yahweh Shai. And they're going to fight him. But we know Yahweh Shai is going to be in his chariot. Because like he makes mention up here. Where is it? Yeah, here we go. Second Corinthians 13 and 9, it says, And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he never lifted up his hand, nor how sword, nor any instrument of war. <laughs> and the reason why is because he was sitting in his chariot, man. Literally, the, his chariot is his weapon. And he's going to command his chariot to release those, release that concentrated fire, man. As it makes mention. But only I saw that it sent out of, out of his mouth, being the mouth of the chariot, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempers. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempers, and fire with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them up every one, so that upon the sudden of, a, of an innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived, but only the dust. I saw a smoke when I saw this, I was afraid. So you see, the Lord going to destroy these nations, man. And to add on to that, second and just 13 and 49, now when he destroyed the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. So you see, the Lord gonna make war with NATO and the EU. <clears throat> and also BRICS. Those nations that have been joining joining together. And let me head on over to um Revelation 17. I'm 12 and it says <clears throat> Yeah, it says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. And the ten horns being the European Union. And it says, These shall make war with the Lamb. And we know the Lamb is Yahweh Shai. Because he was slain from the foundation of the world. The perfect sacrifice. The perfect atonement for the sins of the elect of the elect. And it says, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful, being the saints. And like it makes mention in the book of Jude, man. Let's see what the saints are going to do with the Lord. Jude 1 and 14. And Enoch also the son from Adam prophesied a deed, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. To execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly, among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed. And of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So yeah, man, they're coming to execute judgment. Now going back to Revelation 17. Yeah, and it says, verse 15, it says, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whole city, which is America, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. These shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So yeah, man. Now when the EU are going to be angry at America <laughs> and then and then go fire their missiles, man. Their nuclear missiles. 
And it says, For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city be in America which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So yeah, where it talks about the beast, man, with the seven heads and the ten horns. And you see, and the woman was sitting on top of it. <clears throat> That's with gold <clears throat> and purple. So that woman, so just imagine a beast with seven heads and ten horns. And a woman that's riding, riding it is America. Basically, America has control over NATO and the EU, man. Basically. But yeah, man, I hope this was edifying. I want to give a praise and glory to you. And shalom.